This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. As that familiar Christmas song goes, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Now that song doesn't lie. Christmas is a wonderful season of giving and compassion and peace. We gather with family and friends and homes for delicious meals, the swapping of gifts and downtime spent together. It's a time to reconnect with the ones that we love the most, a time to express our feelings of thankfulness and gratitude for everything that we have been blessed with in our lives. For many, the only way that it could possibly even get better would be if there was snow painted across the lawns and the rooftops. But I have to be honest with you, these 80 degree temperatures out here, they feel quite all right to me. The truth of the matter is that Christmas is about the birth of God's Son, Jesus. It's a time when people assemble together as the body of Christian believers to hear the story of his birth and to sing joyous hymns of praise to our newborn King. The story reminds us that God indeed blesses us, for he in his infinite wisdom came to us in the flesh to live in and amongst us as one of us. His story is a story of humble origins, born from a poor, unwed teenage virgin in a barn filled with farm animals. Not exactly the entrance into the world that any of us would have pictured for a king, but exactly how God wanted it done. From a beginning like this, we're able to see that Jesus' life will not be a life about status or entitlements or even prestige. Jesus comes in order to bring peace. He arrives in order to right our relationship with our Father in heaven. He appears on the scene to set an example of how we should live our lives while we walk this earth. He is born into this world so that when all is said and done, we will be given a new life with our God that we have never experienced before. Now at Christmas, we aren't necessarily rejoicing that a new baby has entered into our lives. We rejoice because of who this baby is. He is our Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, and we should get to know him. Nowadays, when children are born, what is it that parents do? Well, they take the time to send out birth announcements in the form of a card, complete with a picture and all the stats of the child, and of course the name of the proud parents and any siblings. It's a great way for people to be introduced to this new bundle of joy. Quite frankly, I'm not so sure how excited people would have been to receive a birth announcement from Joseph and Mary. I mean, do you think the shepherds would have been impressed? (laughs) Not in a million years. For one, the shepherds were considered the outcasts of society, working menial jobs that were far from glamorous. Who were they to even receive such a thing? Plus, let's just get real now. These were guys we're talking about. Now, all you guys out there, let's admit it. When we receive a birth announcement in the mail, we might say, well, hey, look at that. Isn't this cool? Isn't that baby cute? I am so happy for Joseph and for Mary and the birth of their son. We then will take that card and proceed to set it down in the stack of mail on the table, never to be seen again. Now, do we care about the information that's on that card? Well, of course we do, yes. But maybe not enough to take it and to pin it to the refrigerator, much less immediately drop everything that we're doing to get in the car and to head over to the home of the newborn. So how will will Jesus be introduced to the world? What will it take to grab the attention of these shepherds, the first ones to hear the good news? Well, and angel trumpeting the arrival of the Christ child might be nice? Or better yet, how about a whole slew of angels dancing across the night sky? Now we are talking. This isn't your average everyday baby. He might have entered into the world in an unassuming way, but his announcement is quite grand and joyous. As we hear from that angel, I bring you good news of great joy. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This right here is a very special baby. 
one that will do great and wonderful things, one that is going to change the way humanity views God and others, one that's going to blaze a path of peace, beginning at the bottom of society's pyramid. In great and magnificent fashion, Jesus breaks into the world to demonstrate at what great lengths God will go to love his people, all of his people, even lowly shepherds, even you and me. We gather on Christmas Eve as a result of God's love. John 3.16 is known as a summation of this gospel message. In it we hear the words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Christ comes into the world to save the world, not to look all cute and cuddly. There are plenty of babies out there that fit that bill. No, Jesus paves the way for us. He gives us direction. He teaches us to love one another, and he makes the rough ways of life just a little bit smoother. Now, when I picture Jesus smoothing out life for people, I can't help but think of all those times throughout his ministry when he approached people who were shunned by the rest of society. Women, children, lepers, the blind, the sick, the dead, prostitutes, tax collectors, foreigners, you name it. The people on the fringes were given special, personal attention by Jesus, and many times that meant that they were being brought back into society. They were given a second chance to live like others. Those hurdles that prevented them from re-engaging with others, they were torn down. Things were smoothed out. Because of their faith, they experienced calmness and peace in their lives. Now, with Jesus in the picture, it doesn't mean that we scoot through life without facing any kind of adversity or misfortune. Unfortunately, we still will encounter problems and suffering and heartbreak. But it does mean that Jesus will be that rock and that foundation as he helps us to push forward through the turmoil and into a state that is much more calm and restful and peaceful. Now, we could go on and on, but the point is that Jesus focuses his ministry on compassion and on selfishness and love. And he wants all who believe to experience this gift firsthand. And this is why we gather together on Christmas Eve. That multitude of angels proclaimed glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Jesus is the one who brings peace into the world, just as these first angels declared. And the shepherds take a chance at getting to feel that peace for themselves as they take a risk leaving behind their sheep, abandoning their livelihoods for the time being, and then returning to their flocks after visiting that Christ child, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. We are all part of a weary and broken world that is in need of Jesus' peace. We live each and every day craving that compassion and unselfishness and love that was introduced to the world that Christmas night long ago. The shepherds, they took a chance at getting to know Jesus. And now we are given that same opportunity to experience God as one of us. Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. But with Christ in our lives, every day becomes a celebration worth rejoicing about. So take a risk. Get to know Jesus for yourself and celebrate the love of God that is found in him. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone, tomorrow does not yet belong to you, so why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? See y'all next week. Later.